art styles. As some of you watching may have never noticed them, they were always a concept and a key part of a game's direction. And as far as the producers of the games want to take that idea is how we get some really funky looking games and some pretty dull ones. Let's look at some pretty cool art styles and you'll see how important they are. Okay, so the first art style to look at is the main reason I wanted to make this video. I have previously made a video with the term the power of something and I thought that looking at art styles for various games would be interesting. First off, Kirby's Return to Dreamland Deluxe on the Nintendo Switch. For those of you that don't know, the game originally released on the Wii back in 2011, and the remake of it recently decided to switch up the art design. Whether it was to give it a different look, so buying it felt more justified or not, but one thing is for sure, it has so much more character to it now. Before, the game looked nice, but the landscapes were generic, which it was trying to go for as a kickstart to the series again after being sort of in a dormant phase. But now it looks like, I, I think I could eat it. But it's not just about the backdrops. No, 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 no. Look at the characters. They have this polished outline which makes them pop from the background. But also, look how much personality it adds to the game. It gives the game a sort of comic book retro style. And look, when Kirby's arm goes inside of the outline, the outline of the arm is removed. And these transition screens are so smooth. Every time they played when I entered a door, it was like a reward. But to be honest, seeing Kirby with a King DDD mask is a reward as it is. Okay, but what does personality add to the game? Surely the gameplay is all that matters. Well, personality isn't necessarily important while you're playing the game, but more importantly when you're not. This is because if a game is full of identity, it makes the experience more memorable, and you can identify where certain games are in a franchise. This then allows them to build a reputation and become classic. If we look at the new Super Mario Bros series, you'd find that you probably couldn't tell the difference between some versions and others. This is an example of a basic art style, one that plays too safe and ends up looking nice but uninteresting. It still has an art style, otherwise it would look like this. Which, even this could be considered an art style. But what makes something stand out is taking a concept and truly transforming the game to achieve that. Yoshi's Woolly World is a key example of taking an idea and making that the main focus of the game. Leading art director of this game, Amy Watanabe, specialises in these art style focus games. For Yoshi's Woolly World, I believe she actually used to make these yarn Yoshis for people in the office, and that idea of a yarn Yoshi turned into a new world filled with string and all sorts of sewing materials. Even Yoshi's eggs are now balls of yarn that wrap themselves around Yoshi's hand and cover enemies instead of just whacking them. Just look at the design of this Yoshi, his feet turn into wheels when he runs, and they even made a special amiibo for this game, and just wow. He is a majestic Yosh. The way that Yoshi unravels himself to go down a pipe differentiates it from every single Yoshi game, and it's these smaller details that take a game from a basic adventure to a masterpiece. And if you look at the user interface, everything is focused around wool and yarn, which makes it feel like a world created from all these materials, rather than a regular Yoshi game with the yarn thrown in. Now, let's cover a game with an art style that actually makes a game worse because of it. Super Smash Bros. Brawl. They decided to include the first ever third party characters for the series in this game, one of them being Solid Snake from the franchise Metal Gear Solid. By adding a character from an objectively gritty series meant that the characters also needed to have a redesign so that neither stuck out from one another. And they chose to make everyone look worse. Mario, why do you like to hurt me? This is a prime example of an art style which is notorious for being unpleasing to look at. Look at the model for Pikachu in Melee, the game prior to Brawl, and then the model in Brawl. Most of the charm that came from the original, like the tubby cheeks and open mouth smile, are gone, but most importantly, the colour palette of this game is just set to a less vibrant selection. And to fully justify the reasoning behind the slander towards the art direction for this game, the most recent entry in the series, Ultimate, stars both Pikachu and Snake, but this time the direction focused more on clay styled fighters. Though this isn't as apparent as the previous Yoshi game, it still allows the characters to feel like the characters they were in their respective franchise. For example, Donkey Kong looks similar to his Tropical Freeze design, and his facial expressions show off his cartoonish design, compared to Brawl where he's serious and posing like a fighter rather than his actual stance. Art styles can also lean into more than just the character and landscape visuals. Menus are a really important factor when it comes to making a game feel nice to play. The goal for artistic menus is to maintain usability while still matching the direction the rest of the game follows. Moving back to Kirby for a second, these games tend to have really nice menus. 
Kobe Superstar on the SNES has this cork board aesthetic, which has the different modes as notes on it. And something about Kirby Star Allies' menus really stick out to me as looking clean. And look at the menu for the ultimate choice! Some menus in these Kirby games are actually playable, meaning that you can walk around to get to the option like it is in the Kirby Clash games. Games that have these sorts of menus give a good first impression and allow the player to understand the style of the game before physically starting it. Mario Sunshine, its file select screen looks like. Okay, I'll leave Mario alone now, I promise. Sonic Mania has this really pleasing art style, which was inspired by the 90s classics, but with a smooth modern take. Even the same aesthetics of the menus have been kept from Sonic 3, but with a quality of life improvement. Compared to Sonic 4, you can see how a change of art style, regardless of gameplay, makes something worse. Sonic Mania has these really goofy animations for events that the playable characters go through, such as getting frozen. Classic Sonic was always more of the silent but edgy type, which matches perfectly with his presentation in the opening cinematics, where you can tell the personality of each of the three main characters in the base game, based off their body language alone. Even the cinematic is fan service from Sonic CD's opening. And while writing the script, I came across this little game called Pizza Tower. I'm sure you've probably heard of it by now. This game has an extremely unique art style, based off the 90s Nickelodeon shows that aim for a more gross humour. But it's not just that which makes it unique. The entire game looks like though it was drawn in MS Paint, which is surprisingly quite pleasing to look at. The animations for Pepino are so wacky it really reminds me of the Wily e. Coyote chasing Roadrunner some of the time. Art styles really are intriguing to look at, and some of the time they make a game. Let me know of any art styles that you enjoy, and I may make another video looking at some more. Remember, that an art style should not be favoured over the gameplay when it comes to designing a game, because otherwise all you get is an average experience and people only remember the flaws rather than the art. The moral of the video is... Mario.